Concerto number three reporting, authentication 1465251. That's Delta Mary 7 flat 5. Concerto three, please be advised we have an identified target in your vicinity and coordinates are being sent to you via secured MIDI channel. Understood. The target is west of your position. Please be advised that the one Mr. Copy P. Asta has been charged of plagiarism. Bad composition practices offenses include eight consecutive Brahms, 25 minutes of ostinatos for his latest score. Eight consecutive Brahms? 25 minutes of ostinatos? Jesus, this guy's a psychopath. Concerto 3, control your emotions. This is a mezzoforte level threat. Proceed to take out your target. This is not a drill. No problem. Remember that time when we had that triple fortissimo threat? That was a challenge. This will be a cakewalk. I'm already on the way. Oh man, I am so sorry internet. I hope uh, that was entertaining and uh, the cringe factor was at about maybe a five or six. Uh, uh, hopefully it's not higher. <clears throat> <coughs> sorry, hopefully it's not higher than that. Um, yeah, anyway, welcome back to the channel. And if you haven't clicked away yet, yes, we are gonna be doing a behind the scenes of how we created that particular video. I'll show you everything from what I did from concept to uh, putting up lighting, uh, filming, also the sound editing, sound design stuff with a little bit of background music for the action sequences. And uh, hopefully this gives you an idea of what you can do within two hours. So that was my challenge when I was trying to do this. And I think I achieved that and uh, got to a point where that video can be sent out. All right, let's jump right into it. Okay, so this is a companion video. If you uh, remember my previous one on how to get more practice as a film composer and looking for more to score, one of my recommendations in that video was to become your own dream director to work for. So in this video, I'll break down all the steps I took into producing what you saw for the action scene of the composer assassin. And I'll be going really fast so I keep your YouTube engagement eyeballs. So hang on. If you have any questions, leave me a comment below with your feedback. I read every single comment and reply to most of them as best as I can. All right, let's go. Steps, first step, pre-production. So what I did first was I looked for a location around the house for where to film. I somehow had this vision um, for, I don't know, a few nights or I don't know what it was. Uh, I think I watched John Wick and I somehow had this vision of an assassin or some sort of shady figure walking through a doorway. I somehow had the idea while back that I wanted to play around with some overlay alpha channel VFX packs that, and put in some gunfire muzzle flashes. I just had to try it. So with that in mind, I knew I needed a side profile uh, location where I could shoot from and I could see an assailant walk past and that's where I'm gonna overlay the muzzle flashes. So this is the hallway that uh, I have here and uh, I think this might work pretty well. And this is the washroom where I would uh, probably be filming and uh, putting the camera somewhere down there, I think. Yeah, it's a very, it's a very tight space. So we can just put it around there. Okay, ow. Let's jump out of the way. Let's put some lighting on. So the next thing after I decided that I wanted to use this hallway here uh, was lighting and set design. So with that in mind, I grabbed my two handy lights. So one is an Aperture MC here and uh, the other is a Nanlite Pavo tube here that uh, is really handy. So they have magnets on them and uh, I can just stick them to where I need to. I picked the classic teal and orange or blue and orange pairing. And then what I did was I just put the MC onto the top of the closet here where there's metal rails and the magnets work just fine. And I used the mini tube light here on the stairs. And uh, it's actually a thing that I noticed in John Wick 3 that I watched recently where they put a bunch of these tube lights um, right at the bottom of each of the stairs to, to kind of make it very clear and give it that futuristic kind of vibe. 
Next step was cinematography and DP work. So I talk a little bit about lighting and, and, and set design there. Once the set production was done, I grabbed my Sony Alpha mirrorless camera, which works really well in low light here. Uh, but don't be intimidated by the rigging and how big it looks. I think I could have really just been able to do all this with my cheaper, um, smaller uh, Sony ZV-1 camera, which is uh, these days less than a thousand. I think you get for Black Friday for like 800 bucks or something like that, or even cheaper in the US. Uh, I live in Canada. Since I have the Sony a7 III here, uh, I did use it and I plopped it down somewhere in this washroom where I had an angle of that hallway from a side view perspective and I could see the assassin walk uh, past. So I slapped on my 28 millimeter lens, which is fairly wide, so it doesn't feel so claustrophobic in there. And I didn't really even care about audio while I was recording the whole thing. And you might be asking, why do you not care about audio? Uh, well, I'll show you a secret weapon if you stick around in this video. But before we get there, we're going to talk about wardrobe department. I talked to my wardrobe department, i.e. myself, and I decided on something simple and dark. Anything will do as the composer assassin. I mean, I haven't really uh, fully fleshed out this whole character, but uh, I just decided for your classic uh, black hoodie and sunglasses. All right, on to the prop department. So what I did was I used the Zoom H8 uh, audio recorder, which looks really futuristic and awesome and metallic at the ends and stuff like that. And I don't think you can really tell during that video what kind of pistol that was. And I thought it looked really, really good. Let me know if you agree in the comments below. All right, so perfect. Look for the assassin and I agreed with the creative direction of uh, my team. And then I went off to film a few takes, finest moments of action superstar uh, breaching a building and tacti coolly shooting and walking in with my Zoom H8 microphone pistol as a composer assassin would have. And then that's it. We have the beautiful footage needed. Now let's move on to post-production. Uh, I handed it off to editor, VFX, and colorist team. And I'm just gonna quickly show you what was done to cut this scene together. First, we had the raw footage. And if I scrub back and forth here, you'll see there's a lot of gaps of time and the talent walking back and forth, so on and so forth. So what I did was just grab with in and out markers, this little clip right there. So I to start and O for the out for the marker. And then I just picked the video icon only. I did not need the audio and I would just drag that down here to my timeline for video one. And then for this second pass, I literally did the same thing. I found that spot, press I, press O, and drag that video down as well. And I put a blur transition in between. Now let's talk about a few things that are happening here. Let's talk about the widescreen aspect ratio, the black bars at the top and bottom. All we had to do for that was to hit timeline, go to output blanking, pick an aspect ratio that you want for anamorphic type of uh, screen. You want something in the two plus range, I believe. So I just picked 2.35, just whatever feels right to you. And that's how we did that. So if I hit reset, you'll see there's no final blanking at the top and bottom which if you like, you can leave it at that. And another thing that we're doing obviously is if I go to this adjustment clip is we're doing some color grading. And so I have a couple of notes here. I just basically were pulling the primaries around in terms of lift, gamma, and gain here just to make sure our scopes look like they have as much information as possible. And I wanted to go for a darker vibe. And then I added on a LUT here I believe I went for a film look LUT, so a Rec. 709 uh, Fujifilm D60. You can play around to see what looks good. And then finally, after that LUT, I did a little bit more adjustments uh, post LUT. The other thing this adjustment clip is doing, you'll notice there's keyframes to give us that fake sort of camera movement for zoom. We start at the default of one at the beginning of the whole clip. And by the time we go to the midpoint, I actually increased it to just very slightly 1.11 here. And you'll get that slight zooming effect. And in addition to that, we're also doing X and Y coordinate keyframing. So if I 
hit next here. This is where I think we kind of begin. So this is our, it stays zero at this point. And if I hit next again, you see it moves pretty, pretty drastically there. And I think I didn't really move it for that second pass when we get to around here. So the reason I did it within the adjustment clip as opposed to each of the individual clips themselves with the keyframing is because I only wanted one continuous adjustment of the movement. I didn't want the keyframing to be happening on the individual clips and that it would reset back again. It would be pretty jarring uh, if, since they were two separate clips. So just having one continuous clip to animate makes more sense. If I go back down here, all along, you'll see that opening with the, the barn doors here. And it literally is just a video transition within DaVinci Resolve called Barn Door. And by default, when you put the barn door on, it is set to vertical. So it actually ends up looking like this by default. And all you need to do is convert that to horizontal. And you get this wonderful opening look. Okay, and another thing I want to draw your attention to is fun little lens flare to give it that anamorphic lens, fun Steven Spielberg-esque type of look. Actually, because of all the camera movements, this ended up being a little bit of a fail of believability since you'll notice that the little light spot here for that lens flare is not exactly following where that light is. I should have fixed that issue by doing some keyframing as well on that. So there's a position control here. So I'll go to where we begin to see it and I'll hit a keyframe and I will drag the X coordinates until it is where we kind of want it. And then I will scrub forward some more to where it swings really wildly. So like maybe at its maximum point here, I will hit this button to create another keyframe and I'll adjust it again to make it stick with that where that light is. Okay, let's give that a try. There we go. That's looking great. I think that should do it. Let's let's look at that from the beginning. It's stuck on nicely. That's the power of keyframe folks. Okay, and of course we have to talk about adding the smoke, which was downloaded from Envato Elements. You can get it from Storyblocks or any other site. And you can see it's just that nice and gray. I did add some color grading here. So this is the difference of what's actually in the video versus what was the original video. And yeah, you would just go to the colors here and you can just play around with the tints. You can see that I added red for the gamma, all I did. And the reason for that is we want to make it believable that the smoke is in that same lighting situation. And the second smoke here that you saw is the same clip, but it's just reversed, just so we have some con continuation. But this time it's, it's more intense because this is where the title comes up. Now this title I was using is a very basic one. I believe it's just a center reveal and I just changed the fonts for it. And if you're wondering, the font I chose was Nove and it kind of has this 90s vibe to it, which was kind of what I was going for, a little bit campy. Finally, the explosion that we added. So this is another alpha channel overlay video and that's what it looks like originally and all I did was zoom it in a bit more so it fills up the screen a little bit and just slid around the x and y coordinates for it so it has this big explosion in the back. Once again there's absolutely no audio and we'll send it over to the sound design team. With the footage available, we took that video and again, it was without any audio whatsoever. I then loaded up our secret weapon tool, which is Audio Design Desk DAW. So it's an amazing piece of software 
for this exact kind of job where we're going to need sound effects, some basic musical elements, and be able to play these things right into a scene as you watch it. I know it sounds crazy, but yes, friends, you can intuitively press keyboard shortcuts to trigger gunshots, explosions, risers, even musical elements like uh, pads, rhythmic elements, and, and, and so forth. All the typical things you'd be doing in your traditional other DAWs and, you know, sifting through all the, your different WAV files and your different VSTs to try and uh, craft a little bit of a soundscape and add music and all that for a film. So there are thousands of sounds in their library and they keep growing all the time. Every time I load this thing up every few weeks, it looks like there's a new sound pack that's available. So it's amazing stuff. I'm super excited about this. So you can see that we have Audio Design Desk. Yeah, I think it's one of the latest builds here, December 8th. They come out with uh, patches fairly frequently, so it's really great. And you know that things are live and updating all the time. In the left side here, under Libraries, there's a whole bunch of sound packs. Now these automatically evolve and uh, they keep adding more and more every few weeks or so every time i come back to this piece of software when i'm working on a project so you can buy these and i think for the unlimited license i'm not 100 percent sure of all the licensing you will actually get these automatically pop up and say hey there's new sound pack available and you can download it there's some really great ones in here uh but let's just make this video nice and short i'll dive a bit further into audio design desk in depth as I get even more familiar with it and I play around with it more and uh, look out for that, subscribe. All right, and there we go, there's there's the footage. And again, I filmed that completely silent, so I knew I was gonna go into the DAW here of Audio Design Desk and start adding some elements. So why don't I step through them uh, one at a time and I'll uh, show you what I did. Because it is in kind of a a burning building we, we, we need some ambience of that hallway of that space so what i did was i actually went into the search section here and i uh, just looked for you know building actually i think i yeah I, I searched through building and this is one of the greatest things within this uh, piece of software is that the search capabilities of all the sounds are categorized amazingly. So I just search for building, I scroll through, I see uh, building burning, I can evaluate each of these. So if I uh, click on one of them and I press the space bar, there you go, there's, there's one burning building sound. I click on another one, I press space bar. So a few different options. <laughs> so there's all kinds of uh, options, even building demolition. Okay, so that might be a bit loud for you. Uh, so yeah, in this case, with that footage, I thought, you know, the burning building might work well. So I put it in there. Uh, you can simply drag it over. Uh, you can even trigger some of these as the film is playing with keyboard uh, shortcuts. And we'll talk about that next with uh, the gunshots and stuff like that. But yeah, so I, I added that on. So before it was silent, now I'm unmuting that. There you go. So yeah, you see, you can give it that space and ambience. And then I have uh, some sneakers <laughs> of uh, sounds as in uh, footsteps. So this is Foley that you can go up here. And I think I just started off with footsteps. Uh, actually, let's just reset everything. I'm not even gonna click all the categories. I'm just gonna type footsteps. And there you go. Let's see what we have. So all kinds of different options. That one's actually not too bad for the scene that I'm going with. Maybe a little too much, too much leave rustling. So I basically figured out which one I wanted and I added these asphalt sneaker steps. So if I play the scene again. I think uh, sounds all right. So just for the differences in the left foot and the right foot, um, there's another track here and uh, I basically played in more footsteps of another foot, I guess. Uh, a little bit odd here. I think I maybe uh, uh, one, two, one, two triggered these footsteps uh, a bit off as you see the other steps are, are in the other one. Play around and make it more believable. Again, I had time constraints of uh, how long I was gonna do the sound design stuff. Yeah, I think uh, within 20 minutes, I was able to get something that I really like. All right, so now we have some of our first gun sounds. So this is the the 
gun cocking. So I'll do that again. I thought that was pretty cool. So that adds to the realism there. And then of course we have those shots that you saw. Now these shots are literally triggered by the number one keyboard here. So every time uh, as I'm playing the scene and I'm hitting the keystroke of one, I've mapped the gunshot sounds to one. So you'll see there's a whole bunch of different options here for different types of, of gunshots. What that does is it, it just gives it a, a big variation in randomization. So every time you hit the, the trigger of one, it'll pick from that. It adds to the realism. Uh, I, just, I just went <laughs> full shotgun, pun intended. Uh, I threw them all in and I just kept hitting one every time I saw there was a muzzle flash there. Uh, after that, I highlighted and replaced all these gunshots. So you can highlight these gunshots and every time you press Command R, they will randomize and replace them. Um, with uh, similar gunshot sounds and they will all be a little bit different so it gives you that kind of uh, different dimension so it's not exactly the same wave file over and over again so that's what i did to trigger that and you can see all these different markers for these different gunshots and you can slide them around you can change the volumes you can add uh, effects like reverb and all that kind of stuff um, but again didn't have much time so uh, i just went for that so let's unmute some of these gunshots here and you can hear what that sounds like okay i think that's the extent of the gunshot so let's listen to that i think that was timed pretty perfectly oh man that just gives me the chills and it's so exciting when you see your film come to life yeah love it Love it. Okay, so we'll uh, keep that sound there. Now we're gonna add some more pistol handling sound. So there's uh, a few that are actually stacked in that opening sequence. So there's this, so it's very slight and in context with everything else. It sounds awesome. And remember we have the other gun cocking sound here. So I'll unmute that as well. Then we've come to the point where, you know, I think We've got the burning building, we've got footsteps, we've got gun handling, and so far it's sounding pretty great. Let's start adding in some uh, rhythmic elements and, and some musical uh, pads and stuff like that, or some risers just to give it some energy uh, besides just the sound effects. There's a music section with a whole bunch of loops and stuff like that. Uh, so I think you can just say hybrid or, you know, you can audition different things here so let's try some of these obviously that's not gonna work <laughs> but if you're doing a comedy or something uh that might be pretty fun fight for life okay sounds pretty dark actually this that's not too bad so there's a whole ton in here. You can search through them. Uh, you can use triggers. You can assign the sounds to these triggers and you can just play them in and slide them around, see what works. And uh, again, with the command R to replace all these elements and they keep their marker placing where they are, but you can just keep replacing with the different wave files. Uh, it's, just a, it's just a creative joy. So let me unmute. Uh, this particular one here, I think I ended up using this Kung Fury short, trying to make it a little cheesy. I was going for a little bit campy, right, with this uh, scene. Got the 80s vibe. And then the title comes in. I like that little pause there, and that's because I actually have a hit here. Let's listen to that. It's more like a riser and by the way again the triggers besides you assigning them into specific ones of uh, the keystrokes there there are built in shortcuts here everything from music design here so there's you can have beats you can add in lines all kinds of different um, uh, parts of, of an arrangement and then you can add the sound design pieces and there are built-in keyboard strokes so h is for hits r is for riser t for transitions p 
for rhythmic. I mean, it's so intuitive. You just press the keystroke at the right time, puts the marker in, puts in uh, some variation of that type of sound, and you're off to the races. If you don't like it, you just hit Command R and replace the specific ones you don't want, or the entire scene if you wanted to. And we can try that. Why don't we try that later on? Let's select everything and just hit Command R, see what to replace this whole scene with, and uh, see what's up. Okay, finally, we just to finish this off, we have this. Let me just solo this and see what that sounds like. Oh, right. So it just adds a little bit of drama underneath. You can tell that uh, you see these dotted line here. This is actually a riser. And the point at which it gets to its apex is uh, automatically marked by ADD. And it, this is where I kind of wanted it to line up with uh, the title of the film. So that's why that, that worked like that. I thought it was cool to just add that element of suspense building up and tension. Okay, so with everything in place, let's try looking at the scene. And I'll just go into full screen mode just for fun. How about that? I mean, <laughs> literally spend 15 minutes, 20 minutes, and you got something pretty, pretty fun already. Okay, let's do what I uh, just mentioned here. I'm just going to hit Command A. So I've selected everything. Now, uh, yeah, let's see what happens. I'm just going to do uh, Command R. Pretty great. So let's try this with the uh, new sound effect. Let's see what it looks like. Okay, not what I'm expecting. <laughs> um, yeah, I think uh, I, I need to work on some of the parameters here of uh, what to replace. So I particularly did not like uh, the gunshots turning into random things. So what I'm going to do is just highlight where I think all the gunshots were. Okay. And with those highlighted, I'm just going to right click and say replace from trigger one. So remember, uh, trigger one had all those pistol sounds. So I'm just going to do that. Okay. So at least it's a little bit more narrow to the categories of uh, what I chose specifically for trigger one. And let's try that again. I'll leave everything else just for lols. Oh, that's funny. But uh, yeah, look at that. Like it just automatically picked a whole bunch of uh, gunshot sounds that I already chose earlier. And it sounds interesting. Uh, it doesn't sound very believable for some of them. Uh, a little bit high pitched, but whatever. It's a Zoom H8 pistol. All right. I think that's uh, probably enough to give you a sneak peek and taste of how fast you can work through with this system. And uh, once I get even more adept at it. I will share more videos and uh, things with it and film more videos uh, in, in terms of films that I, I will sync with it. So if you really like this piece of software, uh, I actually do have a relationship with Audio Design Desk. Again, no money exchanged hands. And this was a beta program that I'm helping them out with. So I'm testing out a lot of the features. And if I find bugs and stuff like that, I report with um, Gabe, the CEO, and also uh, Will from their team, who is excellent. They're super bu nice bunch of guys, and they really listen to feedback from sound editors. And uh, I'm, I'm happy to be working with them uh, to help, you know, raise some awareness of this. And also, if you really like what you see here and you want to support the channel, I do have an affiliate link if you decide to buy it. If you don't want to buy it, if you want to just go direct, that's fine with me. Um, but I thought I should give you that uh, option and disclaimer, and hopefully I'll have some more um, information on discounts and stuff like that along the way. All right. So thanks a lot for checking this out. Back to Alvin, the producer director for the rest of the behind the scenes video. So I may be biased, but I truly do agree and think that audio is more than half of what makes a film make or break. People will tolerate bad resolution, focus and image quality, um, but their immersion experience has to do with 
the sound and the music and of course amazing storytelling acting and you have yourself an instant draft pilot demo that you could present to a bigger production company. All right, on to the wrap. I think that was a real fun one. I hope you enjoyed this BTS on how to make something like this and I hope you learned some tips and tricks along the way. Hopefully this expands your skill set as a music producer, composer, hoping to learn and offer more to the production world. So get out there and practice and play with all the things and put on different hats. So when you work with others in the industry, you know where they're coming from. At least that's my plan again. But more than that, I just love this stuff. It's super fun and I feel like a kid again. All right, please like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff and give me your comments and have a great week. I'll see you in the next video.